Hey everyone. So we're going to take a look at the centrifugal pump design that uh, we posted up a little bit ago. Uh, this is a fully 3D printed all plastic centrifugal pump um, that it's one of the many options that students can choose to design and build in our Intro to Engineering Design course. Uh, and I figured you'd like to, to see the inside of the design process that led to this one. Um, so this centrifugal pump is made of uh, several parts. Uh, the intake plastic housing, which is this guy. The um, output or effluent housing, which is that one. And then most importantly, the impeller. Um, now, the, the impeller design in most typical centrifugal pumps looks closer to something like this, uh, which is just a, uh, a type of fin that will push the water, um, that will spin the water around or the fluid around, and uh, through centrifugal acceleration, the, the fluid gets pulled to the outside and then is spun outward uh, through the effluent, to, uh, through the exit of the, the pump. Um, one advantage we have with 3D printing is that we don't have to stick to traditional designs. Although this impeller does work, um, using a 3D printing type system, we can come up with more exotic impeller designs that uh, have added features. Right? This, this style impeller that you see here that I designed, uh, this would be very difficult to manufacture unless you had access to a five axis CNC mill or uh, something of that nature. But with a 3D printing system, it's no different to produce this part than it is to produce this part. So that said, um, let's look at the overall design. There are, again, mainly three components. The intake housing is a simple plastic housing with geometric design that you can produce using standard extrusion and revolve techniques. Same thing for the effluent housing. Um, there is a fourth small piece that I included in this design, which uh, often goes unnoticed, but is of extreme importance. That is this collar down here. Um, so if you'll notice this collar, it sits uh, making contact to a little divot in the main shaft that um, is turned by the drill or the screw gun that's powering it. And this constrains motion of the shaft as it goes into the housing to only a revolute motion like you see here. Right. Without this collar, the impeller could move up or down, it could slide uh, and translate in an unconstrained vertical motion, as it's easier. Um, so that's why I added in this collar, and this is somewhat like a, a slip ring or snap ring style. So uh, this collar by itself looks like this, and the opening is smaller than the shaft it's going around but there's enough give, enough play, it'll stretch enough when you slide it over the shaft of the impeller that it'll snap onto it like this and remain in place. Um, outside of that, we're gonna look uh, almost entirely at actually designing the impeller because this uses the sweep technique. There's lots of ways you can design impellers. Uh, I figured for a, an advanced 3D manufactured impeller design, we want to take advantage of the sweep functionality. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll make a new one. So you see here I've got an already loaded impeller base with a little divot on there. And then we're going to, to make a new design for the, for the veins, the impeller veins. The way I did it before with several different types of impellers is I had a shape or profile for the veins that was then swept along a path, which is this line. So if I show you that, you'll see it's in the create menu, sweep. You select your profile to be swept. 
and then your path. And it basically gives you that sort of a um, sweep. Now, we can go a little more advanced to that and give it some twist. Like this, make sure that it's joining. Uh, the reason for having twist like this is if the water is coming from this area above it, the input, then we want some angle which will cause the water to be pushed down. That's the twist. And then this sweeping angle, uh, sweeping path here will cause the water to spin out to the side in centrifugal uh, motion. Um, so yeah, we, we can modify this. And I did uh, test several different uh, impeller designs using various twist angles from 90 degrees to 45 degrees. There's only slight differences, but there are some differences. Um, yeah, and if we go back one, this profile really can be any shape that we can think of, right? So maybe I want to, instead of using this rectangular profile with that path, I want to edit it and maybe we just do something like this instead. We will uh, give it an inherent angle like so. Right. This way there's already um, an applied angle to pull the water down. Then again we can sweep these profiles along this path. And you'll see now we've got this somewhat complicated shape like so. Again, we can, we can add a twist angle as well if we think that that would be useful um, to get this nice um, complicated shape. That would work pretty well. So we're gonna do that. Uh, then I want to seal up some bits and trim it and multiply it, right? Because uh, this is just one vein and we need several veins. Uh, so before we start smoothing it out, the first thing I'll do is just multiply it. I like to use the pattern circular path since we're making veins and I just want this pattern repeated. Um, and I can select features instead of faces or whatnot. Select that whole thing there. And we will spin it around the z-axis, which is that blue line there. It runs all the way up. Okay. So there you can see we've started to form multiple veins. Um, I've chosen to go with five veins for this design. I haven't done enough testing, but uh, you know that's one added benefit of using 3D manufacturing, 3D printing is that uh, it's quick to do uh, empirical analysis. You can build a new impeller, test it out, and see how it works. And we'll hit OK. Boom. There we go. So now we've got this intricate flower of impeller veins. And we want to add a couple other features to it. We're going to, in the end, we're going to trim off anything outside this base size. Um, but we also want to have a place in the center where the incoming water isn't blocked and, and has an um, uh, unimpeded entrance into the, the impeller as a whole. So I'm going to basically cut in a little cylinder. I'll do that by starting with an offset plane above it, say there, that's fine. And I'll create a sketch on this plane that will be a circle. Um, the input into the, this impeller design is uh, 15 millimeters. So I'm gonna make it slightly bit bigger. Let's say 17 and a half millimeters. Actually, we'll even go bigger than that. We'll go 25, one inch out. And then I'm just going to take this guy and cut it through, boom, like so. Now we've got these um, blades that are starting to, to form. Uh, last thing is to trim the outsides. So I will create a sketch. Let's create it on the bottom here. I'm going to project the outside of that base so that I have that to use. And then just create a big old circle. That way I can 
extrude in a cutting fashion up like so give it a little haircut and boom now we have a new style impeller uh, now this is actually one that although you don't see it in the videos um, i am going to print and test out because i wanted to make one like this before um, primarily because it has a very purposefully set forth entrance angle up here like we did in the sketch and then the centri uh, centrifugal surface here that will cause centrifugal acceleration of the fluid to the outside. So it's uh, a, a very specific two-zone impeller design versus the, the one that I'm currently running, which works very well, um, but it transitions between this upper part and bottom part in a smooth fashion. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and save that. And you know what, let's, um, let's bring it into the assembly just so that we can see what it's gonna look like. Okay. Hide this, and there we go. And now, where's our new impeller design? There it is. Okay, now I'm gonna joint this. there to there and there we have it we have a new impeller design for our 3d printed centrifugal pump